are your videos restricted on the school Wi-Fi? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, okay. Can you go to YouTube? Uh, through the app. Through the app? Oh, you can watch it on the app? Maybe it's just one of them. Oh. I have no idea. I don't know. Can you go to YouTube and watch any video you want? No. no. I don't know how it works. Oh. Anyway, why would you watch it at school? Because you're here. But then I, yesterday I just saw somebody watching one. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, today is probably one of the most important lessons we're going to learn. It's called the chain rule, which is section 4.1. So, what if you have, if you have x to the third power, how do you take the derivative? 3x squared. 3x squared, that's easy, right? But what if you had something like this, y equals x squared plus 1 to the third <coughs> power? Can I treat that like an x? Or like box? Think of it as a box, see like box cubed, 3 box squared. So do you think if I had something like this, box, can I just go 3? box squared? Why not? <laughs> it just doesn't work, that's why, right? So, well, maybe we can do something like that, but maybe we have to make some kind of adjustment. So let's figure out what that is. So, right now, the only way to take the derivative of this is you gotta multiply it out. So what would the first term be? If you cube it. X to the... Six. <laughs> Okay, let me remind you that a plus b cubed is a cubed plus 3. How many times have I written this? 3ab squared. I told you in, in ab, you got to know cubes at least, but we don't go past that, right? Okay, so x to the 6 plus, following the formula, 3 that squared times that. x to the 4 plus 3 that times that squared x squared plus that cubed. Okay, that one you can do. Okay, so if you take the derivative, what is that? 6x to the fifth plus 12x to the third plus 6x, correct? What can I factor out? 6x. What's going to be left? x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. And then, hey! You want perfect square. Isn't that x squared plus 1 squared? So if we compare that to what we did over here, 3 box squared, that's not really the same, but it's kind of almost, yeah? What do I have to multiply this by to get this correct answer here? Yeah, 2x. So if I multiply this by 2x, isn't this the same as that? So yeah, I can go, if I see box cubed, I can go 3 box squared, but then I gotta multiply it by this. Now th that's what we gotta figure out. Does anybody see what that is? That's the derivative of the box. That's right. So this is what's known as the chain rule. You can use the rules that we did before. In fact, this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna fill in this chart. So if you have y and dy dx. Okay, now on this is on our list, right? If you have x to the nth power, the derivative is x n to the n minus 1, right? Okay, but now we're going to change that. What if it's not just x to the nth power? What if you have, like, box to the nth power? Well, can I just go n box to the n minus 1? No, what did, what did we just learn here? No, you got to multiply that by the derivative of the box, which is du dx. So yes, you can always use that rule, but then you gotta multiply it by the derivative of box. So here, let's look at another example. What if you had uh, uh, x, 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 7 raised to the, give me a bigger power. To the fourth power. Do you really wanna multiply this up? No, no you don't wanna multiply, that's crazy, right? So can I just think of this as box to the fourth and use the power rule there? Yeah. So box to the fourth. Four box cubed. And then here's the most important part. Multiply by the derivative of the box. 
Okay, so look at look at what's the box. What's the derivative of that part right there? Six x squared plus six x plus five plus zero. Boom! Isn't that a way a lot faster than multiplying it up? This is what's known as the chain rule. Okay, let's do another one. See, the thing about getting good at the chain rule is you just got to do lots of problems. That's what you got to do. Just like in Algebra 1, how did you get good at factoring? You did dozens and dozens of problems, right? <laughs> Whatever. Okay, y equal, how about sine cube x? Now, right now, the only way we know how to do this is like what we did on the test, right? You go sine times sine times sine, and then you use the product rule for three things, right? But now, we can use this rule here. We can use the chain rule. Isn't sine cubed x the same thing as sine x quantity cubed, like that? So what do I have? I have box cubed. Hey, this is the power rule. So what's the derivative of box cubed? Three box squared. And here's the most important part. Times the derivative of box. <coughs> cosine x. That's a lot, whole lot faster than going sine times sine times sine and then using the product rule for more than one thing, yeah? Because what if this power was like 10th power? You can use the product rule for 10 things? That's craziness. Okay, let's look at another one. Like I said, you just gotta keep them doing problems. Yeah, I just think it's this. Okay, let's look at another one. Y equals the square root of tangent x. Now, isn't that the same thing as tangent x to the one-half power? Yes, so box to the one-half. How do you take the derivative of box to the one-half power? One-half box to the negative half times the derivative of box, which is secant squared x. That's right. So all of this is just a examples of this power rule right here. Whenever you have box to the nth power, you can, all you have to do is put the power in the front, reduce the power by one, but then you got to multiply it by the derivative of box. So from this day forward on quizzes and tests, if you do not multiply by the derivative of box, in other words, use the chain rule, that is a fatal error. Okay, but what about the other, what about the trig functions, Mr. Park, like sine x? What's the derivative of sine x? cosine x. So if you have sine box, do you think the derivative is just going to be cosine box? No. The chain rule says you got to multiply by the derivative of the box, which is du dx. And that goes for all of them. So if we revise our list that we had, remember we had seven derivatives? This is the same seven, except instead of x there, you have u. u stands for the box. So what's the derivative of cosine box then? Negative sine box times the derivative of box. What about tangent box? Is the derivative just secant squared box? <coughs> no, you got to multiply by derivative of box. What about cotangent box? Is it just negative cosecant squared box? No, you got to multiply by derivative of box. What about secant box? Is it just secant box? <laughs> Why am I asking that same dumb question? And then cosecant box, negative cosecant box, cotangent box, times the derivative of box. Okay, let's take a look at some of these trig ones then. So, what about y equals sine 2x? Now before, the only way we could do this is to apply the identity, right? What's the identity for sine 2x? 2 sine x, cosine x, and then since I see a product here, you would have to do the product rule. Let's just do it for funsies. Okay? I would throw the 2 on the side like an unwanted test. Yeah. And then I have a product here. How does the product rule work? Derivative of the first, leave the second one alone. Plus, leave the first one alone, the derivative of the second, which is negative sine x. So that's how we did it before, but now we have the chain rule. So instead of doing all this work, all we have to do now is I see sine box. 
What's the derivative of sine box? Is it just cosine box? No, then you got to multiply it by the derivative of the box, which is two. That's why I left the space in the front. Put the two. Don't, don't you dare put the two in the back, unless you put parentheses. Yo, but Mr. Park, that's not the same answer. Or is it? It is, because look, isn't this two times cosine squared x minus sine squared x? Hey, you somebody? Isn't that cosine 2x, the double angle identity? Yeah. So shouldn't it be correct, right? I mean, if you do mathematics correctly, it doesn't matter which way you do it. It's going to come out. It's like getting strawberry or blueberry or oatmeal. It doesn't matter. <coughs> oh, my goodness. So you want to do the problems in the most efficient way. Because what if you had sine 5x? Do you guys know the fipple angle identity? No. I don't even know the fipple angle identity. So if you did have sine 5x, you just go, OK, the derivative is the derivative of sine box is cosine box times the derivative of box. It's so simple. OK, let's keep looking at some more examples. What if you have tangent of x squared? Well, what do I see? I see tangent box. It's this one right here, right? What's the derivative of tangent box? Secant squared box times the derivative of the box, 2x. Please put it in the front. <coughs> the rate the coefficients go in the front. See, this is, this is nonsense. This is easy. y equal cosecant radical x. Well, what do I see? I see cosecant box. It's right there. So the derivative is simply what? Negative cosecant box cotangent box, and here's the most important part, times by the derivative of the box, which is? Okay, how do you, come on, we took the derivative of this so many times that we have it memorized, right? Kawahara. One half. That makes it to the negative one half. Okay, but we like to write it like this, yeah? Isn't that the same thing as one half x to the negative half? I don't care which way you write it. I like to write it like this. If you rather write one, one half x to the negative half, that's the same thing. So do we have the basics down? Now we can kick it up a notch. These are just the basics. We're just like regurgitating what's on this list. But now we have to like use these like within other problems now. So let's kick it up a notch. What if you have something like this, and you will. This is, that, this is the next quiz. This is probably the first problem. Uh, 3x plus 2 to the 5th power times 2x plus 1 to the 4th power. Now, do we really want to multiply that out? No, there's no way you're going to multiply that out, right? So how, how do I take the derivative? Well, what do you see? I see something times something. That means you've got to use the product rule. Okay, how does the product rule work? Derivative of the first. Now, what do I see as the first one? I see box to the fifth. How do you take the derivative of box to the fifth? Five box to the four times the derivative of that box, which is three. Everybody following? So just break it down. See, that's the derivative of the first. Now you leave the second one alone. Plus, leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second one. Now look, what do I see right there? I see box to the fourth. So how do you take the derivative of box to the fourth? Four box cubed times the derivative of that box. Two. Two. That's right. You always have to multiply by the derivative of the box. Okay, that's only going to get you half the points. So you know what the other half is going to be? You've got to simplify it. You have to factor it. Because next chapter, we're going to be making number lines. And you can't make a number line unless it's factored. And I don't know, I don't know why, but every year, this seems like the hardest part. You can teach, because you know these rules of calculus, they're very mechanical. But then to simplify this, you've got to know how to do algebra, which is a problem. Well, what can I factor out from here's the first term, here's the second term. What can I factor out? You can't factor out any numbers, right? There's no 
greatest common factor here. So 3x plus 2 to the 4, right? You always factor out the smaller exponent. 2x plus 1 to the third. third. Okay, if I factor that out, what's left? Okay, pointing at it. 15. 2x plus 1. This is just algebra 1 factoring, people. Plus, if I factor this out from the second term, what's going to be left? 4 times 2, which is 8, times 3x plus 2 to the first. That's right. Is that good enough? No. You've got to simplify. See, in the brackets here, this can be simplified to what? 30x plus 15 plus 24x plus 16. So what does that all simplify to? Okay, here. So here's your final answer. <coughs> 3x plus 2 to the 4 times 2x plus 1 cubed times, what is that, 54x plus 31. Now that's simplified. Now you take out your number line. One, you, I'm not, well, maybe this chapter you might make a few number lines, but next chapter we're going to be making number lines on almost every problem. Draw your number line. What goes on the number line? Negative 2 thirds, negative 1 half, and negative 31 fifty-fourths. That's what we go on the number line. So you have to be able to put it in factored form so you can actually make the number line. So if you see a product, you use the product rule. You see a quotient, you use the quotient rule. Right? I mean, none of the rules change. The only thing different now, instead of having sine x, we just have a sine box. That's the only thing we have different. Okay, let's look at an. Can I erase this one now? Because you guys know what's going on. Okay. Let's look at it. In fact, this might be one of your homework problems. I'm not sure. Y equal x over root x squared plus 1. I think it is one of your homework problems, but what the heck? Now, do I want to use the quotient rule here? You have, you have a choice here. You can use the quotient rule. Or do I want to rewrite that as x times x squared plus 1 to the negative half and then use the product rule? You got a choice. What would you do? Product rule? I think I would do the product rule too. But it doesn't matter. It's, all, it's going to come out as long as you do the, correct, the mathematics correctly. OK, so let's do this one then. Now, something times something, product rule. Derivative of the first, 1. Leave the second one alone. Plus, leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second. Now, what do I see as the derivative of the second? What do I see right there? Box to the negative half. I'm going to use the power rule here. So what's the derivative of box to the negative half? Negative half. Put the power in front. Box to the negative <coughs> 3 halves times, and here's the most important part, times the derivative of box, 2x. Two two x. X. OK, there you go. You got half the points. Yeah, you can just leave it there. And then, now you got to simplify it. You want the other half? OK, bye. These twos cancel out. So what? here's the first term. Here's the second term. What can be factored out? What's common to both terms? x squared plus 1 to the? Negative half or negative three halves? Like over here. See, when you when you have whole numbers, it's easy to factor. How come you factor it out of three x plus two to the four? The smaller here. one. Yeah, you pick the smaller one, right? Okay. Well, what's smaller? Negative half or negative three halves? Negative, negative three halves is smaller. That's right. Okay. Students can understand this, but here's the part where I don't know. So if I factor this out from the first term, what's going to be left? x squared plus 1 to the? Negative no. half? Nope. Uh, negative 1 third. Half. Three, three, four. <laughs> I heard five answers all wrong. <laughs> this is algebra 1. OK, maybe 2. What? Go. Just regular. Yeah, 1. Because when you multiply things, when you multiply things, what do you do with the exponents? You add them. What is negative 3 halves plus 1? Negative half. You add the exponents. This is just going backwards. So it's 1. What? 
What did we learn in Algebra 1? <laughs> x to the m times x to the n is x to the m plus n. You add the exponents when you multiply numbers. Why is it that when you, look, you guys can do this, but once there's fractions, oh my gosh, I can't do it. It's like the same thing. How did you know this one was 2x plus 1 to the 1? Because 3 plus 1 gives you 4, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing. Negative 3 halves plus 1 is negative half. Uh, Just change it to fractions and all hell breaks loose. That's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next term. Minus, okay, the 2's cancel out. If I factor that out from there, what's left? An x and an x, right? Which is x squared. Hey, this x squared cancels that x squared. All you're left with is 1. So your final answer is x squared plus 1 to the negative 3 halves. I'm pretty sure this is a homework problem tonight. Let's see if we can do it again all by itself. OK, you guys think you're good, yeah? You guys think you got the hang of it, yeah? No. So this is so. <laughs> OK, but you know what the harder problems are going to be? What happens when you have like a box within a box? Oh, no. A box. Well, you got, I'm telling you right now, multiple choice on the AP exam every single year. So, like, what if you had, let's start off easy. Let's do co cosine cubed 4x. Compute the derivative of that. Okay, whenever you have a trig function to a power, I will highly recommend that you rewrite it as this. Because cosine cubed means cosine quantity cubed, that's what it means. Because if you write it like this, you can clearly see that, what do you have? Box cubed, box cubed, right? Okay, so how do you take the derivative of box cubed? Three, Three box squared, right? Yeah. Times the derivative of the box. Okay, now, now you readjust. What is the box? Now, what do I see right there? What is the box? Cosine box. So now you got to ask yourself, how do I take the derivative of cosine box? Negative <laughs> sine box times the derivative of that box, which is 4. Boom. See, so this, is, this would be a more complicated problem where you have box within box. And I think one of tonight's homework problems ha actually has box within box within no. box. No. No, this, that's, you can <coughs> understand the chain rule on different levels. You can't just know it on a superficial level. OK, let's do another one then. y equals tangent, this is like the same thing, tangent 3x uh, raised, OK, raised to the fifth power then. Okay, so what did I tell you to do? Rewrite it like this so you can clearly see you have box to the fifth. Okay, here we go. Box to the fifth, what's the derivative? Five box to the fourth power times the derivative of the box. See how I circle the box there? Now, what do I see in the box? What do I see there? I see tangent box. Do I know how to take the derivative of tangent box? Yeah, it's on the list. Secant squared box times the derivative of that box, which is three. There you go. And I think <coughs> the, the simplification is not interesting on that one. I think everybody here can go three times five is 50 again. Yeah. <laughs> or 3 times 5 is 8. I've seen that on the test. Oh, you guys are under pressure. That's what. No, I've seen it like five, 5 times, I think. No, that's what happens when you're under pressure. Right, just like sports, you, you practice the, 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 the pass with volleyball, you practice the pass. In practice, it's fine, but then game time, what? Under pressure. Well, that separates the, like, the all stars from the not all stars. The ones that can operate under pressure. All right, so that's the chain rule. Now, notice that I just showed you how to do the chain rule. I didn't like formally present the chain rule. Now I will do it. 
So basically, what is this box thing, Mr. Park? Well, if you have one function within another function, isn't that just this, f of g of x, right? f of g of x. That's like you have one function within another function. So here, let me state the chain rule for you now. The derivative of f of g of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Boom! This is the chain rule. Now some of you are going, what? What the heck is that? Well, that, that's what we've been doing the last 20 minutes. Here, let me show you. Let me show you. Let's go back to the very first problem that we had. I forget what it was. x squared plus 1 cubed? Was that the very first problem we had? Something like that, yeah. Okay, now that we know the chain rule, look how easy this is now. What's the derivative of that? Box cubed. 3 box squared times the derivative of the box. 2x. There you go. That's the derivative. But how does that, what, what, what is this, Mr. Park? Well, notice that, isn't this like you have one function within another function? That's why we did all of this stuff in Algebra 2 in pre-calculus. Let me ask you this. To get this, and I'm going to plug g into f, what does f have to be and what does g have to be? What does f of x, the outer function, have to be? x cubed, and what is g of x, the inner function? x squared plus 1. Do you see that if I took this and plugged it in for x there, you get that? Take this, plug it in for x there, you get that? Okay, now let's apply the chain rule the way it's written. Okay, so to compute the derivative, it says f prime of g of x. Now, let's, let's examine that. What the heck is that, f prime of g of x? That means you take the derivative of f and you plug g of x into that. So here's f of x right there. What would f prime of x be? 3x squared. But it says to take g of x and plug it into that. Oh, here's g of x. What if I took g of x and plugged it into the derivative of f? What would you get? You would get 3 x squared plus 1 squared. Hey, it looks like that. Times g prime of x. G prime of x is the derivative of g. Well, here's g of x. What's the derivative of g of x? 2x. Isn't that the same thing? Yeah, so I taught you how to do the chain rule, but here's, like, a, like I said, the formal definition of it. The chain rule. So, what is the box then? I've been saying box all along here. What, what is the box? Yeah, g, the box is g of x. The inner function. That's what the box is. Okay, bad news for you guys, this thing must be memorized. You have to memorize the chain because you're going to test you on it. Multiple, in fact, I'm going to test you on it multiple times too. Here, here's a problem you're probably going to see in the next quiz. Like I said, next quiz, I'm just going to, you know, instead of you coming in the morning, I'm just going to make a practice quiz. I'm just going to email it to you. But then you're going to have to come in to see what the answers are. Okay, here, this, I usually put this problem either on the test or on the quiz. Limit as h approaches 0, f prime, no, f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x all over h. Just like we had on the test. Hey, isn't that the definition of the derivative? Limit as h approaches 0. This is the definition of the derivative. What function do I take the derivative of? Right there, you look there, right? That, that's the function. Okay, what's the derivative of f of g of x? f prime g of x times g prime of x. That's the answer. You just regurgitate it. It must be memorized. All right. Oh, I've got to tell you one more thing before we stop the video. Uh, there, there's another way to write the chain rule. And it looks like this. dy dx is equal to dy dt times dt dx. See, this is Leibniz's form of the derivative. And the good thing about Leibniz's form of the derivative is you can treat it like irregular fractions. So if you have dy dt times dt dx, 
cancel out the dt's, what do you get? dy dx. In fact, this is why they call it the chain rule, because this is like a chain. Except there's only two links in the chain, so it doesn't really look like a chain. Okay, let me show you a longer chain. dy dx equals, oh, equals dy dt times dt dw times dw dq times dq dm times dm dx. Now let's see, there are five links in the chain. What, what are you talking about, Mr. Park? Because look, if you treat this like regular fractions, don't the dt's cancel out? Those cancel out, those cancel out, those cancel out. What's left? dy dx. You can treat it like every day. <coughs> Well, how is this going to come up on the quiz or the homework, Mr. Alcara? Let me give you a problem. Let me erase this. Now you see why they call it the chain rule, because it's like links in the chain. Okay, I usually give this on the first quiz. If dy, d, give me a, what kind of letters I'm going to use here? dA equals 2. Uh, uh, db, dA equals 3. And dx over db equals 4. Compute dy dx. Okay, how can, what am I going to do here? Well, isn't dy dx equal to dy d a? Now, if I want to cancel out, this is kind of like doing dimensional analysis here. Don't you need a dA on the top, db? But then to cancel out this db on the bottom, I need a db on the top like that. Right? Because look, these cancel out, those cancel out, you get dy dx. Mm -hmm. Okay, all you got to do is plug in the numbers now. What is dy dA? Two. Two. Well, if db over dA is three, what is dA over db? One third. One third, that's right. See, that's the beauty of Leibniz's notation. You can use it like regular fractions. Now, if dx over db is four, what is db over dx? One fourth. So what's your final answer? And don't say two twelfths. One six. Boom. Hey, this is not that bad, Mr. Park. All right. So tonight's homework got plenty chain rule problems. Just, the, just like factoring, if you're gonna get good at it, you gotta do dozens and dozens. Otherwise, you're not gonna get good. I just wanna check something. I wanna check the assignment. Of course, you guys look at the assignment sheet daily, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we've got a holiday Monday. Yeah. Yep. All right, so, okay. There's nothing really going on until next week, Friday, is, enough, is the last quiz of the quarter. And then the following Tuesday is the last test of the quarter. When is the quarter? Uh, October 18th. The day before, do you guys leave on the 18th or 19th? Or oh, the day before you leave for senior camp. All right, let's turn off the video and pass out the test.